I'll wake up for a smile each day Positive for my mindset, don't oh, know Put this smile on somebody's face In my own little way And I go dead there for you, my brother No need to feel alone Go dead there for one another But this is Johnny where we take You know say I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here for you And I go dead there for you, my sister You no need to shake We go dead there for one another For this is Johnny where we take I'll be there for you You go there for me We are a family, always there for one another. Join us. D-Star, Raising Role Models. Hello, Superstar. Welcome to church. There's something about Daystar. We are a place for stars. You know, children go from being little stars to shining stars to mega stars. And then we move them into the star hub. Then they show up in church, you know. And that's the beauty of the community that we have here in church at Daystar Christian Center. We are a church of stars. That's the community. Your children become stars. They are born as stars. They grow from little stars into shining stars, into mega stars and they rub their shoulders at the Star Hub. This month we've been talking about the power of community and it's been a loaded month. This is the last Sunday in the month of July and God has indeed been faithful to all of us. I don't want you to miss out on the power of community, the people that we have, the friendship that we are building here and the fact that there are some times when life situation will dull your, your shine, it will dull the kindle, it can even put you out. But you know the way it is with charcoal, being beside a shining and bright one automatically lights it up over time. So that is why you ought to be in a community. So that even when life puts out your shine, it puts out your fire, you are in an environment that would spice you back, that would light you back. So I want you to plug yourself into a unit in church. Plug yourself into a place where you can serve, where you can function, where you'll be shining and you would be building that community even better. Before we go into the service, let's take a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this service. We pray that, Lord, for everyone connected, you would help them to see the power of community. You help them to feel the love of being in this space. And Lord, if anybody joining us feel like they are not shining, that their star is not shining, Lord, Father, we pray that in the course of this service, you would help them to connect with you, that you make our stars shine indeed and be an attraction to this fold. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. All right, now we'll be going into the praise and worship. If you are in the auditorium, rise up on your feet. And if you're at home, get ready to party. When we come to the presence of God, it is not just normal. We are ready to become ignited as we go into the new week. Jesus, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Can I indulge you to just quickly get up on your feet and tell the person beside you, good morning. Tell the person, God is good. Tell the person, regardless, God is good. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above the, of, of all we can think or even imagine. He's our Enlele God. He's the sovereign king. Can you just take a few seconds and worship the God who is sovereign, who rules in the affairs of men. King of all kings, we worship you, Jesus. God na elele, God na wayaw, God na elele. God now I am nobody, nobody. Somebody give Jesus praise. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Let's go. 
Can you clap your hands like this? Everybody, one, one, one. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, sounds good, sounds good. We sound the blood, what it only.
Okay, okay, they start, they start. It's okay to lose composure in the presence of God. Tell your neighbor it's okay to lose composure. Tell your neighbor it's okay to lose composure. David said, I'll become more undignified than this. Are you ready, they start to lose composure? Are you ready, they start to lose composure? Two, three, hey, praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody praise.
The devil could have had the final say, but you are still standing. No one will our hands to you with a grateful heart we lift our hands to you Jesus we don't take credit for what you've done we don't take credit I'll never be more loved than I am right now wasn't holding you up so there's nothing I can do to let you down doesn't take a trophy to make you I'll never be more loved than I am right now Sing it out, all the grateful people Sing it, call his name Child You are
number the hair on your head oh we appreciate you Lord thank you this moment in Jesus mighty name we have worshipped will you put your hands together and let's celebrate our God this morning hallelujah can you tell your neighbor that God knows your name he's paying attention to the things that concerns you glory to God let's celebrate Jesus one more time we shall be praying for our nation and one other nation as our custom is Luke chapter 4 verse 40 New Living Translation. It says, As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. No matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. Glory to God. So this moment we're going to be praying for Nigeria that the power of Jesus will heal all sick families and family members in the name of Jesus. Will you pray that prayer? Father, thank you for Nigeria. We bring our families and all family members before you that your hands will touch, heal physically, heal emotionally. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. God will heal every sick family member. Those that are depressed, those that struggle with mental illness, those that are struggling with physical illness, Lord, every organ of the body that is having any problem, any pain, send forth your word, stretch forth your hand and touch this moment. Pray that prayer. Pray. Let healing flow this moment. Let the healing hand of Jesus flow through lives, even for those in this service, those who are watching online or physically present. Or we'll watch later. Jesus, let your healing hands touch people today. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Want us to pray for Montenegro. Montenegro, we want to ask God to cause revival in the churches in Montenegro. Will you pray that prayer? When revival happens, healings take place, even on the street, order is restored. People seek God. Wickedness is brought down. Move over the nation of Montenegro. Move over that nation. Break the power of corruption. Revive the church. Send laborers into the vineyard. Let passion to do that is right. Passion to know you. Let it flow in that nation. Revive the church. Let people hunger and thirst for you. Can you just commit your week before God? That you will be productive. That you will add value to whoever comes across your way. That you will add value in your place of work. You will add value in business. You will be that person for whom someone will smile. For whom someone will give glory to God. You will bring healing to people around you. You are weak. You will be fruitful. Thank you Lord. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Eternal Father, we thank you for everyone in this service. As we have prayed, heal families this week. In the name of Jesus. Let sicknesses vanish from our bodies. In the name of Jesus. Heal those who are troubled in their minds. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray revive the church in Montenegro. In the name of Jesus. And for everyone here as we step out. May we attract blessings. May we be people of value. May our lives touch others. Thank you because we'll return with testimonies next Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We have prayed that prayer to the God that answered prayer. So will you celebrate him this morning? Hallelujah. So good morning to your neighbor. Say good morning to that neighbor. And please have your seat. We want to welcome everyone to this service. We welcome those online and those that are in person. This is Day Star Christian Center. We call it the home of stars and mega stars. And we have one assignment from God, and that assignment is to raise role models. Role models are examples, 
Role models are people whose lives God has touched, transformed in a way others want to pattern their life after, their, after those people. And, and the key word in this church is transformation. God promised us that when you are a part of our services consistently for a period of three months, you keep doing the things that are taught from our various platforms, which include the main uh, uh, meetings like this, uh, Sunday and midweek services, uh, our teaching platforms, you know, the, the Daystar Academy, Daystar Leadership Academy, uh, Daystar Business Academy, and uh, DSAP, and so many other platforms. And you are a part of our small groups, the Home Fellowship System, both the hybrid and the, um, I mean, the hybrid, which includes online and on site. God said, when you take part of, the, of those meetings, you do the things that are taught from those platforms, the evident will be in your life within three months that something good is happening. And those who knew you before can attest to it and you will become, ultimately become a role model. Jesus Christ is our chief role model. So we run three services on Sundays in this main facility, 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m. This is the last service for today. We have our centers in Alimosho. We have a center in Ikorotu. We have a center at Lekki, we have one in Badagri, and we have the Star Hub. The Star Hub is for people who are 16 years to 23 years, also in Oregon here. If you know any teenager or any young man that wants to go anywhere or want to go somewhere in life, please send them to the Star Hub. Something will happen. In fact, if anything is wrong with them, just send them to the Star Hub, and Jesus will meet them there. So, we stream our services online. Um, Live.daystarng.org. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We are on, on online radio, daystarng.org forward slash daystarfm. And all our church services are on demand. You can always watch this service over and over again. And we have the online community all across uh, the nations of the world. Every region of the world, we have our me people meeting online. And we have physical groups, those that meet in person in Lagos here. Hundreds of them. All you need to do is to go online, they start ng forward slash small groups, and you'll be able to join one. Please do avail yourself of these platforms. All right, we want to celebrate those online that are worshiping God at Daystar for the first time. Will you put your hands together and celebrate our guests online? So if it's your first time and you're logging in online, please go to um, the chat room on the platform where you are. There's a link. Click that link and leave us your details. We want to send you some information and um, you know some materials and we want to keep praying for you. If you are on our main platform, Daystar, uh, ng.org uh, please look for the sign up button on the right hand on the top right corner and please click it leave us your details now if you are in this auditorium or any of our physical locations and you're a part of this service for the first time will you signify by a wave of hand we want to celebrate you we want to clap for you Woo! look at many hands let's put our hands together for them can you rise up on your feet our officials want to put a pack into your hand come on come on come on yes i see you can you stand yeah let's shake them let's hug them let them feel the love of god if you are far from them now put your hands together very well for them you're welcome to this time once you receive that pack you may please have your seat. We are excited to have you. Bring out a white card in that pack. Fill it with your details. Leave it on your seat. We'll pick it after the service or pass it to one of our officials. We want to keep praying for you and we want to stay in touch with you. God bless you for coming today in Jesus' name. Amen. Just some announcements before we go into the testimony and the word. We have baptism, water baptism by Marshall today, 30th of July, 1 p.m., at uh, near our star hub on this road, please come with a change of clothing. 1 p.m. today is for water baptism. Online membership school resumed yesterday. You can still join. The portal is open. Please go to learning.destang.org. Be part of it. School of Parenting is having a, an event on 12th of August by 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the venue is JJT Park Alausa. Please, the details will be on the screen. It's already on the screen. Take part of it. And finally, for today, on the announcements, this Wednesday is our communion service 
in this auditorium. If you can find your way here physically at 6 p.m., please come. If you can't be here, be online. And if you are online, please get communion material ready. God's power and presence will be here to do great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So here, we say that our greatest advertisement are the testimonies of changed lives. And want to take one testimony today from KJ was sent in on 12th of July. This person says, extraordinary career advancement. By the way, if you have a testimony, daystarng.org forward slash testimonies, please send your own in. It will bless someone. It will encourage someone. So this is what KJ said, that the situation is that I discussed career development with my new manager when I joined a new department within my company in 2019. The discussion focused on outlining my aspirations for 3 to 5 years and 10 to 15 years. My manager concluded, concluded that I should expect a promotion every 4 to 5 years if I worked hard. So what did God do? KJ said, I trusted God and applied the teachings of Daystar around excellence and the lessons I had learned, I had learned from Daystar Leadership Academy. God showed me so much favor at work that from 2019 till date, I have been promoted three times. <laughs> he said, it may be impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. I have come to return all the glory to God for granting me extraordinary career advancement. Praise the Lord. Will you put your hands together and celebrate God for that? As you have celebrated God, may God answer you swiftly in the name of Jesus. Remember he said, with man, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. It doesn't matter what it is. Bow your head in prayer and talk to God this moment. If you have any need in your life, you're trusting God to meet it. Will you speak to him? Just speak to Jesus right now. Ask him to send you a specific word as the word comes. Spirit of the living God, we thank you because your word is coming today for our sakes. Speak to someone in this service. Let your hand touch someone. Do a miracle in this service. Open someone's heart. Let fresh idea come. Let bodies be lifted. Let yokes be destroyed. May we receive direction as your word comes. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we receive our senior pastor for the word. Welcome to the Star Christian Center once again. We call it the home of stars and mega stars. <laughs> it's a beautiful day wherever you may be all over the world. The Bible says that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name will be praised. So we join with everyone all over the world today who is worshiping and praising God together with God's people, either physically or online. The presence and the power of God is with us. Right where you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, in each of our locations as we're gathered physically, in your home, hotel room, or wherever you may be, the power of the Spirit of God comes on you now. The power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from death touches you now, engages you now, envelopes you now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy the atmosphere around your life changes now. Christ came announcing the kingdom of heaven is here. The government of heaven is here. So I declare in the name of Jesus, the atmosphere of heaven is around you now. Whatever cannot be found around God disappears in the name of Jesus Christ. No sadness. I prophesy joy. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. No fear. I prophesy the impartation of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no lack. I prophesy miracles of provision in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I prophesy the inspiration of the Spirit of God 
and that as we go forth right now under that atmosphere of inspiration, you will hear something. In the name of Jesus, you will get the answer to your prayer. You will get an instruction from the Holy Spirit. This service marks the end of confusion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone say good amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. We have a God-given assignment to raise role models. That is our job, locally and globally. Okay, combine both. Globally, right? <laughs> we raise role models. The transforming power of God is here through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Our mission statement says to empower you and I to discover, develop, release, and maximize our potential in God. The key word is empower. Every aspect of our ministry is empowering, but I'll draw your attention especially to our training programs. God bless you in Jesus' name, amen. All right, Acts chapter 4, verse 23, New International Version. Acts 4, 23, New International Version. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. The power of community. That is what we've been discussing all through these months. The power of community. There's an interesting story in Luke chapter 14. You know, interesting story. Because it says that, and it was Christ that shared the story. It said there was a certain man that um, prepared a feast, you know, a party. And he sent his servants out to bring people in. And the first set of people that they approached declined the invitation. The second set agreed to come, because when they came back and told the boss, the first set of people we invited did not show up. The boss said, okay, you, you know, because there were three people actually. The first one said, I just bought land. I want to go and see it. The second said, I just bought five yoke of oxen. Those were the tractors of their day, agricultural equipment. He said, I want to go test them. The third one said, I just got married. Just got married, right? All three declined invitations. So when they reported to the host, he said, wow, okay, go and bring in the poor and the maimed, you know, and the lame and the blind. The place was half filled. Then he shouted, go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. The place was packed out. Very instructive story, right? Very instructive story. In my view, they went to the wrong set of people first. This is a party, right? And the major thing you, you're going to serve there is food. Why was the first set of people the wrong set of people? They were all in a good place. Okay, let's put it like that. They were all in a good place. Someone said, I just bought land, right? <laughs> I want to go and see it. Can you imagine that? Especially for those of us in Lagos. Somebody says, I bought. Then he says, I want to go and see. <laughs> no, you're not living in Lagos. You, you cannot do that in Lagos, Nigeria. You bought land. You want to go and see it. <laughs> the one that you saw before you bought, you have to be praying that nothing will go wrong. This one now says, I bought. Now I want to go and see. Your land, you will find it in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I know what I'm saying, right? One of my friends bought land, right? Got the correct set of documents. As they started the construction, that was many years ago though, as they started the construction, <laughs> somebody else came and told them to stop. The lawyer of another owner, and he dropped his card. And my friend was to be a lawyer. 
So he went to meet the other lawyer in the office. And both of them produced correct sets of documents. Both from government. That was many years ago, right? Good. <laughs> but both of them produced correct set of documents. So what are you going to do? <laughs> so my friend said to the other lawyer, we know where this is headed, right? If we go to court, this thing will not be resolved in about 30 years. So my friend bought the land again <laughs> from the other owner and collected <laughs> this other set of documents. Yeah. So he got, so he had two sets of documents. With that, he was able to cons continue with his construction. So I'm trying to tell you how comfortable this guy was that, that was saying, I bought land. Now I want to go and see it. <laughs> anyway, I say that the first set of people were the wrong set of people simply because they were not in desperate need of what was going to be provided at the party. Right? But then you notice that as they begin to reach out to people that needed the food, people that needed the party, they were able to get people. The poor and the blind and the lame. The place was half filled. Then he said, go to the highways and the hedges. Go to the lowest places in the community. The place was packed out. I want you to pay attention <laughs> to one word that was used by the host. Go to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. That's New King James Version, Luke 14, 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23, New King James Version. Go into the highways and the hedges. It says, then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Oh, wow. What does compel me? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. What I'll do, right? I'll read it from other translations of the Bible so you get a clear idea of what this compel means. New Living Translation. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. Aha. So I'm trying to say something about the quality of the invitation. The quality of the invitation. <laughs> there had to be some pressure. There needed to be, <laughs> you know, some compulsion. Um, the Passion Translation, Luke 14, 23. So the master told him, all right, go out again. And this time, bring them all back with you. Persuade the beggars on the streets, the outcasts, even the homeless. Insist that they come in and enjoy the feast so that my house will be full. Ah. So when it comes to getting people to come and be a part of what is going on, right, to have their needs met, there is still need for some compulsion. There's a new word here, persuade. How persuasive are you? Persuade, right? He says, insist <laughs> that they come in. I love it. Message Bible, Luke 14, verse 23, Message Bible. The master said, then go to the country roads. Whoever you find, drag them in. I want my house full. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hold that thought. And let me remind you that all through this series, what we have sought to do is to move as close to the biblical template for the church as possible. So we've been there in Acts chapter 2, we've been there in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, to see how the church started, what is in our foundation, right? So that we can align with it. Every builder understands that. You want to build something that is not in alignment with the foundation, you're going for a collapse. We want to be that church that is as close to the biblical template as possible. And we established a few things. Number one, that under the new covenant, power has been decentralized. We emphasize that. 
that on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when the power of God came and, and the Spirit of God descended, you know, the, the power of the Spirit of God descended on each of the disciples of Christ in the form of fire, the fire sat on every single person. So unlike the old covenant where you had only a few people that were anointed and then everybody else had to line up with them, they were the ones that had God. Whatever they said God said was what God said. This is now new. The Spirit of God is inside every believer and the Spirit of God is upon every believer. Okay? Everyone has the Holy Spirit. So Peter stood up on that day you know, in Acts chapter 2, and said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. You see the gender thing, they are broken. The generational thing, they are broken. Because it said, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So we have a slogan in Daystar Christian Center. Every member, a minister. And we said the structure Okay, the structure of God's house changed, of God's oppressions changed. <laughs> so whereas everybody had to go to the temple before they could worship God, remember in John chapter 4, Jesus told the woman that he met by the well, the time is coming when you will not have to go to this mountain or that mountain to worship God. He said, the time has come when those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. For he's looking for such people to worship him. So, <laughs> Paul the Apostle explains and says, you are now the temple of the Spirit of God. Wherever you show up, that is God's address. That is where God is part time. That's a powerful foundation for us, right? We established that clearly. We established the fact that because there was so much power, everybody was anointed, the temple therefore became too small for what God wanted to do, for the expression of their capacity to meet needs and to solve problems. So they also spilled over into people's houses. Ministry happened in the temple. Ministry happened in people's homes. Small groups, right? We established the fact that the church is a family. And the key quality of a family is unconditional love. And Christ said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And we saw how that love was expressed. Unconditional love, sacrificial love, that some people even decided to sell their land, some sold their houses to make sure nobody went hungry. Amazing. And last week we were discussing an interesting factor, visitation. The need to go from house to house, to meet people right where they are. Because that's when we really know what people are going through. And we're able to meet their needs with the wisdom and the power of God. And sometimes the material things that we have. All right. Let's add one little bit today. <laughs> okay. The same Acts chapter 2, verses 46 and 47. New Living Translation. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. They were pulling people into their community. Remember, this was a community of love. There was a lot of sacrificial love. There was a lot of generosity. They were making sure nobody went to bed hungry. They were sharing food. When there is love in the family or love in an organization, it will always spill over to the community around them, always. That is why we tell organizational leaders, pay attention to the culture of your organization. The way you treat your organizational members is the way they will treat your customers. It's amazing. <laughs> you treat people harshly, they treat uh, the customers harshly. You speak uh, to them with disdain or disrespect. That's exactly 
what they will do to customers and you wonder what is going wrong with the business, right? So the love within this community of Christ, this community of God's people, obviously spilled over to the community because the Bible says that they were enjoying a lot of favor with people in the community. Who wants to care about a church that does not care? Of what value is the, is the church in the community if it's all enclosed by itself, like salt in the salt bottle? Of what use is it? With beautiful labels. Because it's a salt, but nobody enjoys its value until it makes contact with the food or contact with whatever it is that has the potential to decay. Right? This community in Acts of the Apostles was making contact with the community. That's why they were enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Hallelujah. You have to admit something. It is sad, but it is true. Most people do not recognize the solutions to their problems. People hang close to the solutions to their problems, but do not recognize because of what we call cognitive bias. They already have some things in their minds. They have their own analysis of their problem. They have their own diagnosis of their problem, and they have their minds made up on what they believe should be the solution. In fact, it's one of the major reasons many people miss the answers to their prayers. Ampo? Oh, <laughs> Second Kings chapter 5. The Syrian general, Naaman, right, traveled all the way from his country, was directed to Elisha the prophet, and because he had leprosy. And then he got to where Elisha lived, and Elisha did not even come out of his house. Elisha sent his servant. He said, tell him, tell the general that he should go down to River Jordan and wash, bathe seven times. When they told Naaman, he was angry. When you get home, read it. Very interesting scenario, right? He was angry. He, 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 you know, he was like, what's going on here? What's going on here? River Jordan? He said, are there not better rivers <laughs> in Samaria? He named them, rivers Fapa and Abana. So they said he was furious until somebody came and said, sir, if he had told you to do a more difficult thing, wouldn't you have done it? Sir, why don't you do it? I think it's nicely put. <laughs> if I was there, I would have said, sir, you're the one that has leprosy. It's not the prophet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Naaman said, River Jordan? Are there no better rivers in Samaria? Then he added, I thought the man would come out. Look up to heaven, call on God, and touch me, and heal me. Right? He was angry. And that's very interesting. Remember what I said? People come close to the solutions to their problems and they don't recognize the solutions to their problems. They don't recognize the answers to their prayers. Honestly, this man came all the way and the answer, the solution to his problem was being presented to him and he did not recognize it. Why? Cognitive bias, prejudice, mind already made up on how the solution should come, on how the money should come, on how the breakthrough should come. I thought the man would come out. That thought, quote and unquote, that's the problem. Some of the major problems in people's lives are because of the thoughts that they are thoughting. Oh my God, I just created a new English word. <laughs> Permit my grammar. <laughs> yes, the thoughts that they are thinking in their mind. That, that's where the major problems are. Eventually, General Neyman took the instruction. Even if he wasn't quite happy about it, he went into River Jordan the first time, came out, went in the second time. When he came out the seventh time, his skin was like the skin of a baby. 
He was healed of leprosy. Mm. I'm talking about the reason why we need to compel, the reason why we need to persuade, the reason why we need to put pressure. Because that's exactly the word that the man used there. In this dark Christian center, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at how people <laughs> sidestep powerful solutions that God has given us as a church. In the early days of our church, we, we analyzed the demo, demographics of the people that live within five kilometers radius of our church. And poverty came number one. It's Africa, right? It's Nigeria. Poverty came number, as number one, the number one problem that people have. Then we asked ourselves, how have we been addressing the poverty problem? We looked at the preaching. And the only thing we had been teaching on finances was giving. Give, give. We analyzed it from every angle. What to give, what not to give, where to give, where not to give, how to give, how not to give, who to give to, who not to give to. It's just that now that we were doing analysis, <laughs> eh, we saw that it was the wrong solution. Not that giving is not important, but to give the idea that giving is enough. Just give, give. Give more. Give sacrificially. Your breakthrough will suddenly come. When someone does not have capacity to add any value, it's deception. Yes, I kept quiet, deliberately to let it sink in. So I asked God, I said, Lord, they don't have, I don't want to be saying give, 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 give when people don't have money. Is there anything in the Bible that can teach them that will help them to get it? God answered the prayer. Powerful instruction, powerful revelations. They're, there in, they're in the books. Start with what you have. Ideas rule the world. They're in the bookshop, in our bookshop. Start with what you have. Ideas rule the world. The parable of dollars. And then the Holy Spirit gave me revelation on entrepreneurship. If people really want to create wealth, they need to be entrepreneurs. They need to do business. I then started teaching entrepreneurship. 7 a.m. on Sunday morning. 7 a.m., something I did not see anybody doing. It was, it was a crazy idea at that time. But we did it. And people would pour into those classes. You know the amazing thing? People's lives changed. People's lives changed. But this was about 20 years ago. And the beautiful thing for us is that right now in our church, we have people that attended those classes then. And some of them are humongously successful in business now. But this is where I'm going. So I stopped taking those classes a long time ago. We set up a school. It is called Daystar Business Academy. The people God has helped, people that made money with God's values, they are the ones teaching in the school. Millionaires and billionaires. If anybody shows up in this sacrifice center, wants their finances to change, pray, you are praying, you are fasting, you are working hard, and you have not been to Desta Business Academy, there's a big question for you. What's the problem? So today I'm here to drag you, compel you. What else do you want God to do? God fearing millionaires and billionaires. Okay, remember. Cognitive bias. Because we live in the poverty ridden environment, we overvalue, we tend to overvalue material things. So our definition of wealth is flaunting, is visible. But when you enter our class, you will know, you will learn. The major part of a really wealthy person's wealth is invisible. You won't see it. So because the people here balance the power God has given them, the financial power, the wealth, with humility because they are not doing what we call a Yoruba language, Yoruba, right? When you, 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 you step in in a way that you make fear to grip people when you, when you show up, right? Because they don't flaunt. People don't realize when I, when I stand on the stage in this time teaching, I see some of them. 
honestly, my head, the question just, if only the people sitting next to this person know who they are sitting next to, on, you just hold the person. How did you make it? Okay, since you do, can't recognize them. We created a school. They take classes in the school. That is why that word was introduced. You would think, oh, since the master said, go to the highways and the hedges, you know that they should go to the poor. It shouldn't be difficult to bring in the poor. It doesn't work like that. Cognitive bias. <laughs> hey. It is easy to become a hada, hadaholic or hadoholic. There's something called hadoholic. When one is used to hard life. Hard li when someone presents a solution to you that looks too simple, you're suspicious of it. It's like when many of us will not know because we are too young. You know, most cars before used to be uh, manual drive, right? I learned driving with manual drive. Good. When cars with automatic gear transmission first arrived in Nigeria, they were cheaper than the ones with manual because people were suspicious of them. If you listened to mechanics and the rhetoric, you know, the narratives going around among poor people then, it was, ah, ah, <laughs> ah, don't buy it, oh. don't buy it, oh. The, in Yoruba language, how do they describe it? They yourself. Hmm? Let, me, let me try and explain it in English, right? Because if your battery runs down with the manual shift, manual gear shift, hmm? you can turn the ignition, put it in gear two, press the clutch down, and with that, it will be free to move. So somebody can push it. And when it has gained some little speed, you can take your leg off <laughs> the clutch at once and the car will jack into life and start. Let me not even try to describe. You guys can get it. Very young people. But that was what we used to do. When your battery was so low that you couldn't start the car on its own. Now, you can't do that with a car with automatic gesture. So, passing around the narrative, I don't buy it, don't buy it, though, because you can't do that. That's poverty narrative, isn't it? Because the people that designed the cars did not plan that the bathroom should not be okay. <laughs> right? So those cars, which ran and run on better technology, now happened to be cheaper <laughs> for some time before people now discovered the truth, right? So I'm saying, it's not automatic that when people have desperate needs in their lives, they will recognize the solution when it shows up. There is a need for dragging. There is a need for dragging. Should I read that verse to you again? Yes, Luke 14, 23, Message Bible. The master said, go to the country roads. Whoever you find, drag them in. So in this Star Christian Center, we have plenty of food. Plenty of food, plenty of what is valuable that can change people's lives. We have the Daystar Academy, for example, right? This is the academy that, is, that comprises of four schools that can change somebody's life. Membership school, maturity school, ministry school, mission school. We have the Daystar Leadership Academy, right? Where we teach, we teach you how to start an organization, how to run one at a high level. Project management, financial management, uh, systems <laughs> development, how to build an excellence-oriented organization, organizational growth. The major things you will learn in the business, they're there for cheap. Right under the nostrils, right? Not to talk of our star hub. I was speaking to a young man, you know, young man in this star, 28 years old. He said, God used star hub to change my life. When I was confused, didn't know what to do with my life, God used star hub to change my life. Anything star hub wants to do, I'm ready to contribute money to it. He's a founder, right? Co-founder of three tech companies. He said, sir, one of my staff, he named the person's position. He said, the guy's, the guy's salary that I pay is $200,000 a month, $200,000 a year, right? One of my staff. I said, God has really helped me, you know? He's still single. Yeah, I won't mention his name, right? <laughs> Eligible single. <laughs> 28. From Star Hub in the star, right? Hmm. We have this app, this star skill acquisition program, where we teach people vocational skills, because that also leads into entrepreneurship, right? 
not to talk of our groups, our fellowships, like the Women of Destiny Fellowship, has various units. One deals with women trusting God for, for children and different aspects like that. Then we have a strictly masculine, our men's fellowship. And some people will just come and, and, and just be blind to, to all of the value we're adding. We have the school of parenting, for example. And most of us are young. We have young kids. Instead of experimenting, there are people who are not only experienced but also trained. Powerful, life-changing. Not to talk of our online church that reaches people, leverages technology all over the world. What am I saying? We need to drag people. Right? There is a need for dragging. It is wrong to be aware of solutions and not to inform the people that need them. When you get home, read 2 Kings 7. The day God changed the story for Samaria and he used four lepers. And when those people came, saw food, the first thing they did was to pack for themselves, pack clothes. After some time, they saw that the thing was more than what was necessary for, for only four people. Then they said, what we're doing is not good. If we don't go and share the news with everybody else in the city, something evil may fall on us today. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. No evil will befall you. As you commit, as you commit to drag people to this party, <laughs> to the food God has prepared, right? To the provisions God, that God has made for transforming people's lives. I pray that the power of God will rest on you and you will have access to resources you never had before. Right now, right now, especially in Nigeria, things are rough for a lot of people. Things are tough. People are parking their cars and trekking long distances, right? But then we're not here to dwell on the problems. We're just here to emphasize the fact that God is the alternative. His system is the alternative system. Here, nobody goes to bed hungry, right? Exactly. So it will be wrong to be aware of the provisions that God has made and to be silent. Will you bow your head with me and let's pray for a minute. Heavenly Father, help me not to be silent. Give me courage to share what I know is the truth, to share solutions to talk about you and the provisions you have made in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, there is one that scatters and yet increases. There is one that withholds more than is necessary results in poverty. But you said the liberal soul will be made fat. He that waters others will be watered also himself. Proverbs 11, 24, 25. Father, let me be the liberal soul in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The church in Act 2 had generosity. I received grace for generosity. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. We have spoken your word and we thank you because you always honor your word. You always honor your word. As we find alignment with your word, with the template that you created for the church, your word says that we know all things work together for good to them that love you, to them who are the called according to your purpose. I ask that the power of the Holy Spirit will surge into each person's life now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, every barrier, every barrier to the sharing of the good news of what Christ did on the cross, of freedom from sin, and of the community that loves and supports Every barrier to our speaking, to our communicating, we destroy them in the name of Jesus. We break free from the spirit of timidity. We break free from fear and doubt and from low self-esteem. We receive courage, Heavenly Father, to share the good news with the thousands and the millions around us today that need what you have provided in your house. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you that this week we will touch someone's life. You will give us the wisdom, the courage. You will help us to recognize the opportunities in the name of Jesus. Ah, Heavenly Father. Mark, 11, Mark 16, 20 says, And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming his word with signs following. I ask, Father God, in Jesus' name, that your presence will be with each of us. And that, Lord, as we share your love, share your good news with others, Father, confirm your word. Let there be healings. 
Let there be miracles. Ah, let there be powerful testimonies. Let families experience turn around through us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I know when we allow you to use us, then you bless us. So I prophesy, especially as we roll over into a new month, I prophesy on everyone under the sound of my voice that each day will birth new testimonies for us. There will be surprises. There will be promotion. There will be open doors. There will be unusual favor. Someone will remember us somewhere and we will be surprised. Prayers that were prayed long ago, the answers will land in this new month. In the mighty name of Jesus, as we speak about you to others and the provisions you have made, as we release our food, help people with money, clothes, and everything, God of heaven, your warehouses are open. There will be material provision. There will be financial provision like we never experienced before. In Jesus' name, thank you, Heavenly Father. I pray for the person in, who is a part of this service online or physically who says my relationship with God is not okay. I'm a sinner. I want God to forgive me. So thank you, Father, because you made provision for that when your son died on the cross and you raised him. Now, if you're that honest person, can you please put your hand on your heart where you are? Let's pray together. Very quickly, as we receive forgiveness of sins, God bless you. Say this prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. Jesus said there's celebration in heaven when this happens. So we just want to thank you because their sins are forgiven. The nature of sin is removed from them. The nature is put in them now through the Holy Spirit. So we just say thank you. In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you. If you're a part of our service, physically, a card was given to you, please fill it with accurate information. Leave it on your seat. We'll pick it up as soon as you leave the seat. We have very helpful information to send to you. If you're a part of the service online, there is a, a link in the chat room and there's a QR code also. Please give us your information. We'll send what we have to you via email. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. The spirit of generosity. Let's go ahead and do our giving. This is a major part of our worship in Daystar Christian Center. We own nothing. God gave us everything. We just obey the Holy Spirit as we give and be conscious of the fact that this helps us to preach this message all over the world and helps us to meet people's needs every single day. Let's pray as we give. God of heaven, you own everything. We cannot have you and ever agree to believe that we are poor. We can never be. So God of heaven, we give with joy and we thank you because every blessing of the covenant is activated for us this week. Divine protection, peace of mind, joy, perfect health, and safety for all our journeys. In Jesus' name, amen. Abe, are you glad you've been a part of the service today? I am excited and I believe you are coming back with a testimony in Jesus' name. Please put your hands together. Let's receive the best choir in the world, the healing strings of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Good afternoon, church. Woo. In our community today, it looks like there's so much going on. There's so much that it's almost too easy to lose focus of what God has done and his promises for us, essentially. But our encouragement to you today is that in this community around us, that's the community of believers, we know that God is more than able yes. to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that we can ask or imagine. So as we sing, we just encourage you to connect, charge up your faith, and trust that anything that you're waiting on God for is able to deliver it to you. Hallelujah. When did I start to forget All of the great things you did When did I throw away faith for the impossible How did I start to believe 
that you weren't sufficient for me. When did I talk myself out of seeing miracles? And I just can't come back And I 
Jesus, put those hands and clap together this afternoon. I can't deny what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. Will you join me and appreciate the best choir in the world, the healing streams of God? On that powerful note, we've come to the end of this service. We'd like to say a big thank you to our guests one more time. If it's your first time today and you were not seated earlier when we welcomed our guest, uh, please, our officials are waiting for you right at the information center. Please stop by and they will give you a pack. Ask them questions about Daystar. And as you come again and again, the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. To all our friends online, if it's your first time too today, our officials have dro dropped a link there. Please furnish us with your details. And as you come again and again, the Lord will bless you also in Jesus' name. I pray that as you go this week, the Lord will open doors for you. You will return with your own testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. See you at the home fellowship. And with that, we've come to the end of the service. Did you enjoy Pastor Sam giving us some word? Like, it was, it was giving us words like, are you touching the solution? <laughs> and I know that God is going to comp use you to compel people into his fold within the course of this week. I'm going to bring in Susan. I'm going to drag Susan into... You know, there's some words that Pastor Sam was I dropping today. Dragged. We are dragging people. I have been We are compelling yes, people. What word did you... sure people are coming into the fold. In this time, in this world, that people are not really feeling the love 
we have plenty of love in Desta. So it is time for us to drag people in. We are dragging people literally into the household of God where they can feel all the love, yeah. where there is giving, where there is food, there is yes. food in abundance here yes. at Desta. You know, so, there's something that I was saying before we, well, in the in the starting of the service, I said that, you know the way charcoal is, once one charcoal is has is light, others will. So if you feel like this situation is done, or you are feeling like you are not shining, get here. Come here. Let us fara korawa. the Yoruba we say. I love that. I love that. I love that. You are going to get lights up. You are going to get fired up. Here at Desta Christian Center is the place for you. Yeah. There was another word that Pastor Sam shared today. He said that some people have something called ideology, like they are used to hard life. They are used to mental uh, poverty mentality. Some of you, if, if it is easy, you will think it is too easy. It is so cheap. He gave Me. the analogy of the of the car that uh, the, the <laughs> honestly, one thing I want us to realize is. God has given us solution here in this stuff. Yeah. Even I, I'm, I have my challenges with parenting. Yeah. But how often have I been attending school of parenting in this stuff? You know, there is school of parenting in this stuff. There, there is career uh, plus. There is there, this uh, At the there's same time, the business, business school, and, uh, leadership academy. There are many resources everything. here. Please, don't come and attend the programs alone drag someone drag else to someone. join let and us, let us be the light of the world yes, let us shine yes, let us shine yes. and shine so bright yeah. this week drag someone here yeah. into the house of god wednesday service show up physically sometimes between now and wednesday everything you have received has gone so my appeal to you is come to service physically on wednesday yeah. show up and bring someone and it's communion service yes if you are it's not wednesday. around maybe you are we have people watching us from yes, across the world in. Drag someone to your house to join you yes, to watch the, the service as well. Yeah. So let's not, not let us stay alone. Let's not isolate ourselves from one another. Be your brother's keeper. Compel someone. And in the course of this week, as you build the body of Christ, God will build all that concerns you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you close out for us with a all word right, of prayer? I just want to urge you that God will strengthen you. Amen. And give you the ability to recognize Amen. solution Amen. when you see it. Amen. So you don't feel because it's too easy, then this is not the solution Amen. for you. God will give you the foresight to see. Amen. You will recognize it Amen. and you will utilize it Amen. for good. Amen. Amen. I wish you all the best. This Amen. Week. I'm wishing myself yes, all the so. best. And I'm wishing TMO all the best too. <laughs> Have a wonderful so, week. Bye. Bye. I wake up with a smile each day Positive for my mindset, don't oh no. Put this smile on somebody's face In my own little way mm -hmm. And I go dead there for you, my brother No need to feel alone Go dead there for one another But this is the journey we take Just say I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here for you And I put that there for you, my sister You know no need to shake We put that there for one another For this we journey with you I put that for you You put that for me We are a family, always there for one another. Join us. D-Star, Raising Role Models.